Thank, uh, thank you very much for joining us for this uh, presentation by Professor Guolian Huang. Uh, I'm the chairman for Guolian Huang's talk. I suppose this meeting was uh, planned to be chaired by Muhammad Kadik, uh, where since he knows that I'm also colleagues of Guolian Huang's, so asked me to chair this talk. Actually, um, Guolian Huang and I are from the same universities, Beijing Institute of Technology, but he just graduated quite a long time ago, got his uh, master's degree in the year of 1998. And exactly 20 years later, I got my PhD degree there. We are both uh, uh, working at uh, Professor Deng Kai Hu's group for a while. <clears throat> uh, after get his uh, master's degree, he then got his uh, PhD degree from University of Abbott in the year of 2004. After that, he became a professor in the United States. Now he's currently in University of Missouri. He currently holds the position of uh, Huber und Helen Croft Chair Professor of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering. His interest uh, covers a broad area of solid mechanics and artificial materials, including those well-known topics by all of us, uh, metamaterials and topological insulators. Particularly recently, his group has done quite some work on using active component to design um, active metamaterials for purpose of sensing and actuations. He has got publications, uh, more than 140, journal publications, and quite some of them are well known to you, like the paper published in the year of 2014, they demonstrated for the first time negative refraction in elastic metamaterials. Uh, I think today in his talk, he will talk quite a lot using this active component to design innovative metamaterials. So I will just uh, uh, stop here and, and give the opportunity to Professor Guolian Huang to present his talk. So I uh, ask you to please join me to welcome Professor Guolian Huang for his interesting talk. So Professor Guolian Huang, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Yichen. Yeah, very nice introduction. So it's uh, uh, my pleasure uh, to pre present the talk in this seminar. Actually, I watching this uh, theater seminar for a long time. It's a very fantastic event. So yeah, today I will talk about uh, what uh, recently in the last maybe uh, six or seven years ago, then we start to, to study this kind of uh, uh, active, you can call or responsive. Today I call this name elastic material. So many for, for wave control to demonstrate some kind of uh, unusual wave control properties. So the first I will thank you, my uh, previous student, yeah, very smart, fantastic researcher, uh, like uh, Rizu now is a professor at BIT, Yang Chen is a professor in Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, and Xiao Peng Li now is a Toyota Research Center, and then my current uh, a PhD student. So, and also several collaborators uh, from other universities. So today I will be mainly talking about uh, uh, what we have done in this area. Then first talking about some motivation, why we need to do active. Then I will present some work in along this uh, field. Then first I will talking about active um, metal surface, but in last medium we call this metal layers. Then we were talking about some like uh, uh, using this active material to realize some other elasticity and using local and even recently we done some non-local stuff. Then if we've got time, I was talking about the newly uh, interesting phenomenon like uh, how can we got other density using this kind of uh, active materials. So then material now everyone is very familiar in this kind of material you can obtain some uh, property is not ready in nature. So basically many people doing static, but in here I will focus on 
uh, how can we use the material for wave control? So typically, if you want to realize wave control, you should have realized like negative mass density either or negative bulk modulus, or you can say simultaneous. So the application that now is uh, become uh, broader. For example, you can use it for uh, shock wave mitigation. You can do the wave guide, earth split. So, and recently many people are doing some topological insulator. And this, uh, thanks to the advance, advance, advance of the advanced manufacturing, the scale you can see, you can, we go, you can uh, region is a region from the micro scale to centimeter scales. Okay. It's pretty broad. If you go to the civil engineering, you need to go to the meter, meter scales. So uh, this kind of uh, material is fantastic. But if you're talking about the for wave control ability, for example, if you're using passive material, typically if you're using the local restaurant, so they have some limitation. For example, this is kind of a frequency region is lack of tunability. Make this kind of active material is not very uh, suitable for, uh, uh, for operation under dynamic environment. So then active material uh, is, is a good approach to, to solve and attack this kind of a problem by introducing like a, a smart material into this kind of a passive microstructures. But basically, if you, this kind of material you can use in smart material, you can piezo or you can use in electro-theological uh, elastome or any other smart material. By, introducing additional degree freedom. Okay, for example, is a multi-physical problem. You can introduce in the electrical voltage. You can tune this kind of uh, uh, frequency region. Then you can tune the band gap. So the basically, if you're using the active material, you can, in this area, then you can enlarge the scope of study of uh, elastic acoustic material from passive response to active. Then you can adapt to wave control. Or you, then after that, you can make this multifunction uh, properties. So then in here, in this study, then due to the quick response, we many the integrate the piezo uh, uh, actuators and the sensors then into the, the passive like the meta structures then connect this actuator sensor with the microcontrollers. Then basically you can tune this uh, effective property uh, of this material in response to the external stimulus. So the basically if you have like input, then using this microcontroller, you can manipulate this as a effective property. So the, this cornerstone of this design is basically like I mentioned, then you have to introduce this smart material with sensing, actuation, and uh, electric computing ability. Then you can control the material performance. And this is associated functions. And this function you can program, okay, design and online too. So along this area, we, we, we present some work in say one dimensional, uh, also go to two-dimensional. I hope that in some day we can present something uh, in three-dimensional. So the main challenge is how to fabricate these materials. So this idea, this is many, I, I would say, is inspired from the uh, nature material or bio-inspired material. So this is kind of uh, figures shows the, the fry traps. So then this fry traps, this material have like a unique uh, response uh, abilities. And then when the insect in the air, they will do sensing, then the information computing eventually they do the action, then try to the, the capture this kind of flies, okay? So then in, in this kind of material, they have like a two kind of uh, important the properties. The first is a uh, uh, dynamic equilibrium. So this material, and also they should be uh, producing, also consuming the some energy. So the, the violation of the energy conservation in this material 
should be uh, allowed to be allowed. So along this field, uh, we are not only the group doing this one. Listen to they have a lot of uh, some fantastic work on on this uh, field by using uh, by proposing this kind of a response mechanical uh, material. So this two figures shows recent work from the Northland group. So they're using the motor. This is one dimensional and the two dimensional case to demonstrate uh, some unique uh, mechanical behavior. And also like in two dimensional case, I would say this kind of a impact response, unique response, uh, also a really way propagation in this medium. And this is uh, uh, using the, also in acoustic material, using the piezo material to with uh, sensing actuation and the uh, computing ability to manipulate the acoustic wave propagation. So the key of those material is basically we can be using the uh, electric computing to, to manipulate material performance. And today I will mainly using uh, like a piezo with the sensing actuation uh, abilities. So along this field today, I will talking about how can we using this uh, piezo actuator sensing. The first I was talking about uh, uh, to control the wave propagation, transmission, and refraction. Then I was talking about uh, some uh, applications, engineering applications, and then present some like a new, uh, the un uncon unconventional mechanical property like other elasticity and the related ph ph phenomena. Then I will extend to some reason our new work. Then, for example, we how can we not only add elasticity, we can realize so called add density, and what's kind of unique wave propagation uh, abilities. And then last, then we are also talking about not only local because the electrical you can make the non local cases. Okay, so like talking about non local uh, feedback control. So then. First, I was talking about this uh, active uh, elastic metal surface, okay? So uh, for real-time multifunctional wave manipulations. So this is a, like a, a schematic to show how we can present this kind of so-called active metal layer. So this active metal layer means very thin compared with the operation wave frequency, okay? So then we're using this very thin layer so uh, we can manipulate the wave phase along this metal surface. And then, then because of for dynamic applications, so then you need the sensing what's the frequency, right? To passing through this kind of a medium, make this kind of a operation in the real time and the broadband frequency. Then we have to adapt this kind of piezo actually the sensor with some like uh, microcontroller systems. And then the key problem is how can we design this kind of uh, active scatter, okay? So after we design this one, the main objective we can demonstrate numerically and experimentally of this kind of uh, active metal layer for real time and also simultaneously multifunctional wavefront control. And then we can explore some other the wave functions like non reciprocal wave propagation and the skin clocking and also acting away mode conventions. Okay, so then this is a different from like a passive material because passive material you design uh, for mechanical wave is dispersive. Then this is a when you change in frequency, this metal, metal layer may, may not work, but this one could be broadband. So then key question is how can we design this kind of uh, active scatter? So this is kind of a uh, unicell along this layer direction. This is unicell. The basically this kind of uh, active material, they have like a uh, composite, like host median, they have like uh, two sensing and one actuation. The beauty of this one is you make this two sensing doing some like a subtracting operation to, to decouple the interaction with the actuation. Because when this 
kind of actuation, you will generate additional wave. But this sensing, we are only sensing the instant. But this doing this kind of subtracting, then make this a sensing actuation decoupled. But this sensing signal eventually will be pumping into the actuator to manipulate the uh, uh, wave mechanical phase. Okay. So then this kind of a some, some parameter when you, if you want to change in the phase, the relation what's the transfer functions. Then this design is a beauty is a, like I mentioned, is not interfered to the instant wave. And then also they can actively sensing the instant wave, whatever you, you receive uh, from this uh, uh, metal layers. So the key principle of this uh, uh, active scalar and uh, is could be described by this kind of uh, so called uh, uh, polarizability tensor. Okay, so in this is like a, in one dimension of beam structures, you can you can you can sense in this kind of uh, dipole dipole or monopole the field like rotation, uh, displacement, shear, and the momentum. Okay. So then you can using this kind of a microcontroller to, uh, to exciting this actuation force, the similar these two forces. And this is like a, this relation between actuation and the sensing, then we can build up this kind of a polarizability tensor. And this kind of a four by four tensor Q are very rich uh, way manipulate the abilities. To, to act to manipulate uh, the, the response of this kind of uh, scattering. For example, in what we just present the first, the, 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 the active scatterer is basically we we using two sensor doing subtract operation. Basically we sensing is a shear uh, field. Then we're using one actuator to generate, this is a bending field. So the basically in here, other component is zero. We only have non-zero uh, uh, parameter is uh, beta mg, okay? So this is beta mg, we manipulate the phase. The basically you can manipulate this transmission and the refraction, okay? Transmission and refraction, either way. So this is kind of a, uh, I will quickly show this cartoon, then how can we fabricate this material and do the experimental testing. But basically, because you cut this slit to decouple actuation sensing and the bonding these two sensors and the one actuators, they are connect this to microcontroller. So then if you're sending this kind of a tune burst signal here, so then, uh, we can manipulate the face of this uh, metal surface. And this is um, the controller you can use in even uh, wires. Uh, so basically, for example, if you manipulate the face at different uh, the slope, then you can, this is transmitted wave field to the 33 degree. And then in the real time, you can control to manipulate to the 50 degree. And you can go to even, high angle, I believe this should be show uh, 75 degree. I'm not sure if it doesn't matter. So we will show in the next slide. So this is kind of a then uh, demonstration. If you, you can manipulate the, the face, the slope along this uh, uh, mat layers, okay? Then you can manipulate the face, okay? Uh, gradient. So you can manipulate the uh, transmitted wave, uh, uh, passing through this uh, uh, metal layers. For example, this is like a numerical simulation, and this is again showing with our experimental measurement, okay? If you uh, manipulate this kind of a uh, base grid slope, okay? Or this is uh, like uh, turtle signals. And this is also shows the tunability. You can do the real time, uh, the, the so you can go to the 50 degree. So this is also a numerical simulation and this is our experimental measurement. So you can see this is a good, very good uh, agreement between of those. You can even go to the 72 degrees 
And the beauty of this one is you, 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 can, you can go to, because this, everything is electrically controlled. Then you can control this kind of uh, uh, phase modulation in any arbitrary function. Then you can control the, the ray of the transmitted uh, wave uh, along arbitrary functions without changing this microstructure geometry. You, everything is just doing the uh, electron, electronic computings. So the one more thing, because the, everything is controlled by electronics, then you can do this uh, simultaneous multifunction. So for example, uh, like I demonstrated before, if you're using one transfer function, then you say you can make this as a transmitted wave is focusing on some point. And they use, you're using another transfer function, you can make the instant wave or same, then you can manipulate the steam to 50 degree to this direction. So then in order to realize this both function simultaneously, then only thing you need to do is like, uh, you select a new transfer function, then add these two together, then you will see both uh, uh, function uh, uh, the works simultaneously, okay? So then you can see uh, uh, using this new trend of function, you can see the wave focus on, still focus on this point and also wave steering along this 50 degrees. And this is kind of a, uh, this, because this is a, like a two sensor is a uh, also sensitive to the wave directions. So then, for example, if you use sending the wave from using the same transfer function, if you're sending the wave from the left, then using this transfer function, then you can, the, then this is transmitted wave on this uh, right-hand side will be canceled. However, if you're sending wave from the right-hand side, then using, still using the same transfer function, but this is the wave direction change. So this is an instant wave, this is a direction is changing. Then you add them together, you can find the sense, the transmitted wave along this side, and this is amplified. So then you can also realize this kind of uh, non-reciprocal wave propagation uh, behaviors. Okay, so I think this is a, like a first demonstration we try to implement the sensing concept uh, into sensing actuation and uh, microcontroller concept into metal A to demonstrate how can we manipulate the wave propagations. The next one we think about, okay, so in passing material, uh, we in the, like we using this, uh, also this is previous active material, we can only manipulate the transmission or refraction. The next question is uh, whether we can manipulate both transmitted wave and refracted wave, still using this, uh, uh, using this kind of a uh, metal layer structures. So, so the question is, can we do this independent control? Okay, independent control of the transmitted wave and the refracted wave. And then the then question is, how can we design this active scatter? Okay, then after you design this one, then you can realize also uh, this non-reciprocal behavior like we can demonstrate like non reciprocal wave propagation behaviors. So then in order to do this, uh, we have to add like a degree of freedom, right? So then we go back to look at again, uh, say, uh, uh, maybe, I, sorry, I should be talking about this, okay. So in order to add this one, then you come out like, in, we have to come out with a new design. So we come, because you need like, a, you need, if you want to control the transmission refraction, then you have to add uh, at least additional two degree freedom in this active controller. So then we come out the design of this uh, uh, unit cell, okay? Then basically on, in this unit cell, you can see we have one sensor, but we put the, like two actuator uh, peers, okay? Then each of them generate different the voltage, VA1, VA2, okay? So the working principle of this one is for symmetrical part of A1, A2, they will generate the bending moment. And the anti-symmetrical part will be generated shear. Okay, will be generated shear. Then you can, if you're sensing uh, the instant wave, 
Then basically, for example, if you put in this union cell, interpreted by this uh, uh, polarizability tensor is, now you're sensing for this kind of uh, acting scale, you're sensing this using one sensor, sensing this bending moment. But we uh, actuation is two, we actuation both bending moment and the shear force. So then we have additional degree freedom. Then this additional degree freedom, you can do the independent control transmission and the refraction. Okay, so then in this case, we can control the transmission and the refraction independently. And then because we in, increase the, the non zero polarization ability parameters. So they have like a rich design freedom using this polarization tensors, what I should say. Okay, so then this is our experimental demonstration. Uh, this is a, a, like one sensor to sensing. Uh, instant wave, they have two actuation peers. For example, now we give the objectives. If you want to uh, this unicell, then we, we can say meta surface or meta layer to make this wave uh, have ability to control the transmitted wave is zero. And the refraction wave also equal to zero. The basically, the, all the end mechanical energy when, re when, when reach this meta surface, totally absorbed, okay? So this is like uh, showing uh, like uh, experimental results. For example, if without the control, uh, put this metal surface because this is small size, and then we will be passing through this. But if you turn this control on, then you can see transmitted wave is almost zero and, the, and, and also refracted wave also equal to zero. And this experimental result is in good agreement with our numerical results. And you can give any object function. For example, this is called a, this one is called the perfect absorber. Then if you say if you want to have like a perfect uh, transparent mirror, basically it's if you propose the function say transmitted wave is hundred percent and also refracted wave is hundred percent. Then basically in here, this is like uh, you you using you convert the mechanical energy to the uh, electrical energy to mechanical energy because they have more energy in mechanical. Then this one is mechanical energy totally convert to the electrical energy. So then this is a, you can uh, design this uh, transfer function so that you can see uh, if you sending this is a source if without the control you can see no interference. But with the control on, you can see they have a refractive wave and transmitted wave. So if you, if you look, only take the refractive wave out, then you can see the like one like total refraction. And if you look the uh, transmitted side, okay, this is also transmitted wave in here too. Okay, this is our experimental results. This is our numerical result. You can see this good. Uh, uh, comparison. Now basically, now we can use this two degree freedom. You can fully control the transmission and the refraction, or but, and also this is a broadband. Okay, it's broadband, and also this is a kind of a real time and the real time. And then we extend this uh, unicell concept into the the metal layer. In basically, you this metal layer composed of a uh, uh, array of the unicell along this uh, direction. Basically, we, we put the like hanging in cell. Then you sending the instant wave passing through this kind of metal layer or metal surface. Then for example, this is showing is like a, a perfect absorption. So uh, a per, this is like a, a perfect absorption. This one is showing is without the control, the way you can pass through this metal layer without any interference. Then with control, you can see the wave in this plate is no transmitted wave and also no refractive wave. Okay, this is demonstrated in the plate structure too. And, and this median, one thing I would like to say, because they have like a two degree freedom. If you if you modeling this is like a, you can model this kind of a metal surface as a really median. So because of time, I will not go deeper how to homogeneize this kind of a metal structure into a very median. Then if you are interested, you can look at the paper in the details. Okay, so then I will talk about the third one. Uh, 
companies. So the one is like, uh, we try to use this one for some uh, purely uh, wave absorption. So basically we try to not put it in the middle of the median, just how about putting the free, the free boundary. Say, for example, in the conventional median, if you have a free boundary, you have instant wave, then you can have a refractive wave, right? So then in here, we try to uh, adapt this kind of uh, program or, or response of metal layer just along the boundary, then many control the refracted wave. So you can control the refracted wave direction or mode. Then you also even can cancel this refraction to make this uh, uh, total absorption. So the principle, because this is just con control the one refraction wave. So automatically we know we just, just using one non-zero the polarization parameter. For example, you, you, you just take, uh, we sensing the bending, we also the actuation the bending wave. So then this too is no, just make this non-zero. The basically, for example, if you have like instant wave, will reach this free boundary, you have refracted wave. But we just sending additional, the bending wave. You need to try to cancel this kind of uh, refracted wave to make this is a total absorption, okay? So the basically you can absorption or you can control this is a refracted wave arbitrarily, uh, control the phase, uh, amplitude, or whatever you want. So, but in here we mainly focus on this is kind of uh, no refractions, okay? So this kind of uh, principle, the uh, concept, this is come out of the microstructure design too. So then in here we just made, because this is one non-zero, the primeness, we just using the one actuator and the sensor pairs, okay? So this is the sensing, you can sense in the instant wave, then this is signal will be uh, pumped into the actuators, okay? Then we A, then this is a trend function, you can get the rest of the relation, refracted and original refract with a free surface. Then you can control this edge, and make this chain control this R equal to zero or whatever you want. And this is kind of a uh, numerical simulation. Say, if you want to make this kind of a one-dimensional metal layer for uh, this uh, total absorption from, from very broad frequency region, like demonstration from three to 25 kilohertz. So this is a, like a numerical simulation. You can see this is a, a refraction uh, equal to zero. Uh, means total absorb in this broad frequency regions. And this is like a numerical simulation in the, in the transmit case. If you're sending less like five tumors per signal uh, into this is kind of a metal layer, you can see this is a, a instant wave is pinched to this metal layer, total absorb. There's no refraction at all. So the basically is a mechanical energy total absorbed by electrical energy. Okay. Then this is a, uh, experimental testing using this long beam. This is like uh, in in the end we we attach like a piece of actually the sensor. Of course, this is probably also related to this lens. Okay, if you design different lens, maybe we can put using you have to change in the transfer function. And this is a, like a showing the real. If you sending the two bursts the signal, so this is a with control. So this is showing the uh, the wave. So then this is like one dimensional beam using the laser vibrometer to measure this is a, like a, a bending field. Then approach to this end, then you will see no refraction, okay? There's no refraction in here. However, if you, without the control, then you can see this wave passing through here, then when we reach this boundary, so this is a, like instant wave, when we reach the boundary, then you can see the wave strong refraction. So then you can see this is strong refraction. So then this is a, could be using this is tiny to total absorb this is mechanical energy, okay, metal layers. And this is like a snapshot of this uh, uh, wave field, okay? Then you can see uh, a different frequency for 10, 15, 20 Hertz, then basically, uh, if you turn the control on, you can see this is kind of an infrared wave, uh, totally absorbed. 
Okay, this is an arrow. It's, it's, a, it's a very small. And then we, we think about what's the, uh, this is nice, what's the engineering applications, okay? So as a mechanical engineer, we say, okay, how about we using for the vibration control? So the, basically, if you have a beam, a candelabra beam, you have many restaurants peak, right? Then if you, the, along the tip of this candelabra beam using this method, you can smooth the peak at a very broad frequency region. So then you can reduce, totally reduce this kind of uh, resonance motion uh, on this active beam. So this can be very useful in many engineering if you want to get rid of this kind of uh, resonance motion. Then this is kind of, we also adapt this concept is very similar to the acoustic uh, noise control active. So then how about we, we using this kind of uh, metal layer for uh, broadband active cloaking. So what we do is like, uh, because when you do the passive cloaking, you have to using transformation method. So then you, you, you make this kind of uh, coating layer is very, very thick, right? So then how about we using the one layer, using active layer? So using one layer as a sensing and then sensing the instant wave. Then you using this sensing signal to do some delay to do actuation into this active layers. And then this active layer will be recover the instant wave on this side, okay? So the basically uh, means if you're sending the signal from here, then half of as a sensing layer to sense the instant wave, then half of it using the exciting layer to recover the instant wave uh, before this kind of uh, cloaking areas, okay? Before, before the cloaking area. So this is our experimental result, the measured by laser vibrometers, okay? For example, without control, so, and this one, the one, another one advantage is you can go to the large world, okay? Because if you go to the large world, if you do passive cloaking, it's very challenging. But this is, for example, this is a very large world, the, in here, if wave passing through, very tiny way we can see. But however, if you're using our active, uh, active uh, clocking uh, skin layers in here, then we can sense it. Then on along the side, you can excite it to make this uh, clocking behaviors. Okay, clocking behaviors. So this is basically is follow the concept of our acoustic uh, uh, noise control. Uh, but we try to adapt this one to the, to the active mechanical behavior. So I think the, it's, a, it's a promising, okay, to make, if you want to make the thin clocking and the large uh, uh, and the, any arbitrary shape, then you should be able to, 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 to do that using this kind of active approach. Okay, so I think then I will move into the second topic. Uh, what we recently do, try to using this kind of uh, active materials uh, to realize some kind of material behaviors, okay? The basically, the before is like the structural behaviors, uh, you, you manipulate the wave. Then how about this kind of material behaviors? So then basically is, now we are not sensing the instant wave vertical to this direction. We sending wave along this kind of a layer direction, right? So then this could be, you can think about this kind of uh, uh, active materials. But basically this is like, for example, if you, this is inclusion, in a passive inclusion, you have generated a scattering wave, right? But in here, because this is kind of uh, active scattering, we are not generating the passive scattering. We also have like a self sent active scattering to generate active wave for each the, the this kind of a particles, okay? If you send the wave is much longer than this one, this passive scattering could be ignored. Then many is like active scattering will take, uh, take, take a function of wave manipulations. Then we, in here, the main goal is like, uh, can we build up a relation be, between this kind of global material parameter and this active scatter? Then after you can build this kind of active elasticity, then we can explore some unconventional wave propagation in this active medians. Okay, so this figure is a uh, is a 
is a is a physical physical material uh, of this acting. Um, this physical, this is like pictures. Okay, this is physical pictures of this acting material and include the design. In here, this unicell design is like one actuators and the sensing the instant wave. Then we also using this two actuators. Okay, but this two actuator with opposite uh, voltage signals. So to to control the unicell. Uh, mechanical deformations. The basically, we try to using this kind of uh, electrical feedback uh, provide this kind of uh, uh, the electrical uh, com computing. Then you can alert this mechanical behavior uh, like mm, you you want. Okay, like mechanical behavior you want. So the working principle of this kind of uh, active material is uh, like this. Okay. For example, this is uni cell. When this is a beam, is sensing this is a bending. Okay, so then bending where the, this signal will be pumping into two actuators. So that because this two actuators using this opted voltage, then this is opposite voltage will generate a shear deformation of this uni cell. Okay, so the basically for this kind of a uh, uh, active scatter, basically, if you have like bending deformation, will generate the shear. However, if you only send the shear deformation to this kind of a uni cell, uh, the sensing signal in the middle, they are not sensing this kind of a shear deformation. So they will not pump any signal to the actuator. So the basically, the shear will not generate the bending. Okay. So then if you want to describe this kind of mechanical behavior in this kind of uh, uh, constitutive law, then in terms of the shear strain and the bending curvature, so then you can find this kind of uh, unconventional parameter P is related to the trend of function. So then this kind of a P, we call this kind of odd micropolarity. Then in this kind of, uh, uh, you can call this micropolar medium because we have like a, a, a rotation in here. Okay, so that we call the micropolarity. Or you can, in the broad, uh, broad region, you can call this other elasticity. Okay. So how can we interpret this kind of uh, uh, the working mechanism of this unicell? Uh, because this is like an active system. Uh, the the how is the energy? Electrical energy and mechanical energy uh, interchange, exchange. How can they interchange? So then, this is a plot like a uh, unicell under shear and the bending deformation. Okay. So then, this is like if you go to the one loop from the bending and then go to the shear, the unloading uh, bending and the unloading shear. So if you follow this path, okay, of this unicell, then then you can you can see this one is eventually they will gain me mechanical energy. Okay, the mechanical energy is gain. The basically it's like unicell is like a electrical energy convert to the mechanical energy. However, if you go to the uh, opposite direction, so if you go to the opposite direction, so then eventually the the mechanical energy will decrease. The basically mechanical energy will be convert into the Electrical energy. So, so this is like uh, the energy is changing and walking down uh, during the deformation. So, then in order to understand this kind of uh, uh, wave propagation behavior, then we can use in continuum median to get this kind of uh, dispersion and relation of this kind of uh, one dimensional medians. Then in here, this different from our conventional beam theory we only have this term, but we have like this is a, uh, this additional term. And this additional term meaning is then first, uh, because this is a variation of energy conservation that allow this spectrum have like non-zero imaginal part. So then this imaginal part means the wave uh, could be glow and attenuation in the time. And also, if you look careful, if the K, they have like a cubic term. So the cubic term means what? 
this uh, dispersion, they have like a variation of the parity uh, break symmetry. And the K and to the negative K is not symmetric anymore. Okay. And the both the energy and, and the, the evaluation, uh, energy conservation and the parity symmetry, then also endowed this kind of uh, uh, the, the topological non commission skin effect. So the basically then in here, then this is just the showing uh, along some direction. For example, if you, this is a, this is a wave along this is positive K is a P greater than zero. Then this is a, the way will be amplified. And then if you put this P smaller than zero, then this is a will along the, this is negative K, the amplified direction, this is negative K directions. And this kind of a, a non homogeneous skin effect could be uh, characterized by the topological wind numbers. If you plot this uh, uh, dispersion curve in this complex, Omega domain, then you can have this loop. Then in here you can find uh, for 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 this like a p greater than zero, then you have the wind number equal to positive one. The meaning is you can this kind of a finite structure host beam, you can have like uh, uh, the energy the skin effect local wave energy the localized on this kind of a right hand side. Then if you you using the transfer function like P is negative one, then this is a wind number equal to negative one. Okay. So then most then you can find some more way more energy is localized on another side. Okay, on another side. So this is typically called a, a topological skin effect. Okay. So this kind of a non super wave propagation uh, phenomena is also validated by some uh, numerical simulation. So the basically, this is our the program material. If you send in the wave from left hand side or like right hand side, say we're using transfer function, a uh, one transfer function h equal to three. Then, as we can see, then if you're sending here, the wave will be amplified. Okay. However, if you're sending from the right hand side, it will be decay. And then if you Select this kind of a, is the original part, then this is no uh, skin. This is like a bulk mode. Okay, they can minorly changing the the phase velocity. Okay, they were changing the phase velocity on this. Then this is kind of a the our numerical model, and also we're using this actual effective median. We will get very good agreement on this one. Okay, very good agreement on this. One. And then this is a, then we conduct experimental uh, testing. This is how our experimental setup. Then we're using this kind of, uh, uh, this is one dimensional layer. Then we sending this way from this right hand side or left hand side. And then this is a sensing actuation, the connected by this is a uh, microcontroller, okay? So then this is our experimental results. Then if we control, then you can see uh, this way will be amplified. Then if you are sending the wave from other side, then you can see this wave is decay. Okay, this is our experimental testing results. Then this is a, also performance at the, this is frequency region from 1.5K to 4K. Then we can using uh, do the FFT, then we can, uh, plot this kind of uh, dispersion curve, then you can get a good F match. And also this is showing uh, experimental results and uh, for from right hand side or left hand side, the way you amplify or decay in, in these regions. So this is a kind of a uh, material is showing this kind of a non uh, response. Okay, non response. So then I, how many minutes I have? Maybe I, I have a... Uh, 10 minutes, around 10 minutes. Yes. So then I will quickly go. So what have we done recently? Okay. So say this is a, like a local you control. So how about the non-local? 
So then we still, this is the same, like not same exact name we say, still this is being have this kind of uh, actually the sense appears, but we using non-local control, okay? We using uh, not like unicell and using next unicell. Then we using this uh, sensing applied to next one actuation. So then we try to use this non-local electronic feedback to provide another new uh, platform to alert mechanical response. So the basically, if you want to interpret this one, because this is we sense in the bending, we add we add another bending. Then if you interpret it in the in the continuum mechanical constitutive law, the basically we in here we don't have like other elasticity, but we do can manipulate the effective bending stiffness uh, in in into this complex numbers. Then this complex number we call this non-local because this is factor from the non-local behavior, the bending stiffness. Then this one can break parity symmetry and they also can control the magnitude and the phase, okay? So what we can do for this one? So then if you're using this one, then you, you can plot this kind of complex dispersion curve because this is effective uh, a bending stiffness now is a complex number. So you can plot this real part in regional part. And then also this is non-local order. You can go to the one, two, and the three. So one, two, three, many is manipulate the original part. So the basically original part means along one side will be amplified and the another, if you wave, uh, wave, wave number propagation along another side will be decay, okay? Then if you go to the more high order, you can fold in this decay behaviors. So then you can see, you can at different frequency, you can shift this folding behaviors, okay? So, then in here, if you the condition is if you this is kind of a kind of a small, okay, compared with the real stiffness, they will cause this kind of non-reciprocal decay and, and amplifications. And this also uh, we can interpret by the non-commissional skin effect. And then basically different from what we present before is a local. The non-local we can fold in this skin effect. Now basically uh, in Using one parameter, you can host different frequency, the uh, wave localization, either on right-hand side or left-hand side, a different frequency simultaneously. Or if P equal to zero, then it's no localization behavior. And then this could be characterized by the winning numbers on this one. And this is our experimental testing to show this kind of amplification and the decay behavior from right-hand side or left-hand side. Behaviors. Okay. Then we also talking about uh, recent a lot in like the behavior is studied by uh, the the Yi Chen. Okay. Uh, I think about okay, as a he give a very smart design in, in passive way. Okay, in active way for us seems like uh, is uh, is is straightforward. We can do using two transfer function h one h two. Okay. Then. This H1, H2, then you can to here or to here. Then you can go even go to the next name. Then we, can, for example, if you H1 equal to H2, we many manipulate the real part. We can make this a low to night behavior, okay? So then you can even make the larger, you can generate spend it. Then you can also new stuff. You can make this is a like a feedback non-local is different. Then what's the different cost? Then different cost, then we also not manipulate the load like behavior. Then also we manipulate the original part. Okay, you can see this is the original part and not symmetric. So then you can make this non-reciprocal amplification, okay, in this kind of uh, uh, non-local behaviors. Okay, and not only for, for example, if you're sending the wave in, in this low frequency, then basically for load like we have a three mode, right? Then we can manipulate this three mode uh, amplification or decay. But this amplification decay is non -reciprocal. okay? It's kind of interesting uh, uh, using the actual approach. Okay, maybe this is the last part, this uh, quickly goes through. Then people in this act, mathematical area are very familiar with negative mass density. Then in here, we can propose this other density behavior. 
The basic is, means we can sense in the motion, for example, along the y direction, then using this motion applied to the x direction as a force. So the basically, for example, if you take this union cell, if you can sense in the y, okay, then we can actuate the force along the x direction. So basically, if you move this one, the unicell, to make this unicell, you can generate non-zero force along horizontal direction. So the basically, you can, like other behavior, if you interpret this operation, the, this like uh, off diagonal term, low x, y is not equal to zero. But low y, x is equal to zero. Because if you do the opposite y, if you send Horizontal motion, we are not general force in the y directions. Okay, so this is other behavior stuff. So this is our design. We simply we do this one because time I will not talk too much. Then this is showing experimental results, demonstrate this uh, kind of uh, art density behavior. If you sending the, say, if you sending the bending wave, then you will measure the transmitting, then you will generate the bending wave plus the longitudinal wave. But if you send in a longitudinal wave, they have no wave mode convention. So more interestingly is like to do the, the wave stealing behavior. So what this is, then if you manipulate this other density by the microcontroller, the coupling term, say if we gradually increase this coupling term, then this system is gradually from the non hermitian system, like isotropic median, then gradually go to the isotope, anisotropic medium. Then at some point, this, the P and S wave mode will be at the same point, will be merged. Then eventually will be, the, this is called the exceptional point, then become like non emissional mode. Then this is become a like a couple. It's one mode, the real part, they are same, but they have a different opposite emissional part, okay? The meaning is what, Along this direction, they have way two mode. One mode is amplified, one mode is decay. So this is kind of a two, the wave field demonstrate this kind of phenomenon. So if you're sending the shear force, then, then this is kind of a, if this is a beta is small, it's isotropic, then gradually become the anisotropic behavior. If you look here, then eventually this is kind of an accessional point. At some point, you can see the wave along this direction, 45 direction, then become like non hermitianal behavior, the amplification along the 45 degree. And the same thing you can see for the P wave along the 45 degree. And this kind of a tune build, uh, the wave stealing behavior using this kind of other density, you can tune, okay? It's not only 45 degree, then you can select different beta, then you can manipulate to different direction, like 135 degree, and then you can, you can change the amplitude, the magnitude, like rho x, rho y, using anisotropy. You can go to real part anisotropy, you can go to different directions. And this is already demonstrated this kind of uh, uh, non hermitian behaviors. And then even you can say using the emission of part to, to manipulate uh, longitudinal and the shear, uh, the amplification direction are different. Okay, you can amplify them different direction too. And this is kind of an exciting uh, phenomenon, I think using the uh, density behavior to, to manipulate uh, the wave propagation, okay? And because of time, I think that's uh, all what I want to present today. And some last two parties are still not published, okay? So then basically I give you some uh, uh, review, some what we've done in the active metal surface for real time and the multi-function wave control. Then we present this one in the material point of view. How can we uh, realize some kind of art elasticity behavior and other density behavior and some like, uh, uh, like unconventional wave control. I think this area is very interesting. Is, is, not, is not only the end of this story. That you people can, from there to manipulate the many behaviors. For example, recently in Northern group, they are doing some like uh, really way for this kind of art, art behaviors. And the, then if this is kind of a manufacturing, you can fabric it and you can go to the 3D. Then you can do a lot of a kind of a wave control and uh, uh, mechanical 
property control within it. And that's the, what I suggest. And that's all. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Guolian Huang, for your very light talk. It is amazing to see that you can control elastic wave in such a flexible way using your sensing and actuation component. Um, and also it's glad to see that you are just doing some non-local elasticity using this uh, electrical wire collected components. Learn uh, from you. Discuss with you a little bit about this uh, later, but first I'd like to hear some uh, questions from the audience. So if you have any questions, so you can, I think you can directly unmute yourself and raise your questions, or you can just type your questions in the chat dialogue so I can read it out 